This is a troopy I got a couple of months ago and decided to build it up for camping. A few years ago we went through Africa in a Land Rover and I did a basic setup in the Land Rover that worked very well and I've more or less copied it into the troopy. Um, basically I'm not a carpenter, I'm not good at electrics, I've got very few tools, working tools. So what I've put together here is simple, but um, as I say, I think it works pretty well. The first thing I'm going to talk about is a power system. The Troopy came with two batteries, a main one and a secondary battery. And what I've done is separated the function of these two batteries. This first one is the one that runs the cart, starts the starter motor, runs the headlights, the inside lights, the indicators and everything else. And the second battery is the one that is that runs everything inside the cart to do with camping like the internal LED lights and the fridge and the uh, and, and stuff stuff like that. I mean how I did it is I put what is called a solid solenoid, which is this thing I'm pointing pointing to. Now, how the solenoid works is that it takes the power from the main battery. When, once the, the main battery is charged, it the, takes the power from the main battery. It goes into the solenoid, out of the solenoid, and charges the secondary battery. And the secondary battery is used as I said for drawing stuff off inside side the troopy and for instance if you leave the fridge on for a couple of days it will draw the secondary battery flat but it will not draw the main battery flat so you you will always be able to start your start your motor and and as charging charging comes as I said earlier your first your main battery is first charged, then you charge your second secondary battery. So from the secondary battery, I took a fairly heavy cable, a six six mil cable, threw a fuse into the car. So it ran along the runs along the transom, and here you can see it in the transom. Then it I come down down with it, and it goes through the trans transom in a place made made for it, and it runs into the car. The secondary battery also has a charging from a solar pa panel. So, it's, so the secondary battery is charged from the main battery and I've also got a backup for the so solar panel. So the power came through through here next to the, the throttle cable and runs along this plastic on the side of the, of the seat and comes into the back, back of the car. One side goes along the floor and is used to charge the fridge and the second lot will come and charge the inverter and the fuse box. So the power comes in as I said into the inverter. What the inverter is the function of this is to change the voltage from 12 volts to 220 volts. So you can uh, charge a computer on here and whatever and it's also got a little U USB port. And then secondly I've got a fuse box where the power comes in at the bottom and then it runs through the fuses and it charges various things in the body. And the good thing about this is if something blows, a light goes on and you know which fuse you've got to go to to fix everything up here. And on, on the side, something separate, I've also got uh, the, the box for the solar panel in here that, that gives the condition of the solar, solar panel, or the control of the solar panel. So from the fuse box, I've got some power. The first thing that, that I go up to an internal LED light that is used for inside the, bull, uh, the the car if we need to see stuff but primarily if we're ever going to have to sleep in here then on the other side I've got a secondary light that will be used to look into the fridge 
and get things out of fridge if we use the fridge at night because the fridge we can access through a gull wing window of which um, I'll show you how it works works l l later on and then other things that come off the that power is my reverse camera and then there's also a meter type of thing that, g that gives you the internal temperature, the external temperature, the amount of voltage that is given by the secondary battery and uh, the time of day. I've got some other of these LED lights that run along the back door and it's pretty good because later on I'll, I'll show you that I use this as a, as a cooking surface and then I've got another set of these lights that run along the, the other back door. There will also be a freestanding lot of lights that go outside under the awning, but that that's will be something separate. Because there's no access from the front to the back of the troopie, and I didn't want to go climbing over everything in there when I wanted to get to stuff in the middle, I decided to put a gullwing window in the middle here, which is I've put in myself so it's not really so difficult to do and from the gull wing window we can access the fridge so you get into the fridge here and it also accesses a water and we can fill the water from through the window and into the pipe and we pour this into the into the funnel and that fills fills the water tanks. I mean the water tanks are two of them. There's a 20 litre, there's a 20 litre backstop one. This front front one has got, I put a lot of numbers on, so so there when when the level is on 12, you know you need to fill it with 12 litres and, and you can take that amount from the smaller one. And um, I've also got this switch for the fridge, fridge down here and this whole lot the fridge and the water bottles I can take out very quickly and put a seat in here if, if I need to travel, carry someone extra around during this, the summer period. So that's the fridge and the water set up from a different angle. It's a 20 litre container, second backup 20 litre container, my 10 litre bar and then this funnel I just take out and I store it somewhere and closes, closes up, so very, very, very easy to do. And for getting water out, out of here, I've taken a hose that I just clip this onto something at the back and when I want to use water I just take it to a low level and the water comes out. Lift it up in the air, the water stops going, so it's really, really easy, you don't have to turn knobs on and off and everything. In. So when I'm finished, finished with it, I just hook it up here, and that's that's where it stays. When I when I do long trips, then I close either that valve or this bottom valve, just as a as a factor. And this is filling the water. It's pretty pretty easy to fill up the water. You don't have to take hose pipes around and and um, worry about fittings and things. It's easy to fill this 10 litre container, store it somewhere and just fill it up. The occasions when it's too windy or too stormy to sleep in your rooftop tent and you get these 40 or 50 knot winds and rains and everything and what to do then, you'll see as, as I develop that I've left a platform in here that we can strip this stuff off the platform in five or ten minutes it's they're all in plastic boxes up here and we can sleep inside there we can close this down and sleep in through the stormy stuff we can put our, our luggage outside here because as I say it's going to be in plastic boxes so that was one of the, the reasons plus for package that we didn't make this draw system any higher I mean some some of the, the people you see that take the draw system right up until here and then they, they somehow fit it in, in the middle there for us. We've got uh, enough storage here and this is how Okay, let's get onto the drawers. I've got one set of drawers that run all the way back to the front seat. This is them as I put it out. This 
and I've got a second set of drawers that only runs until the fridge these drawers work is I've got a big slider, another slider back to back and then I've made the frame with these aluminium 20 by 20s with joiners that you get from Bunnings so it's a pretty easy thing to set together so I've got the drawers that they run here and on the side of the drawers this side and the other side where there's spaces on the left I made access so you can get into them. Like, there's quite a long room around here. I mean, like on this, for instance, on this side, I can fit in, fit in a long space. So there's heaps of packing spaces in here, here for things like your tools, etc., etc. But anyway, let me carry on on these boxes and show you more about them. So on this size, on the drawer. I've used a lot of boxes so these you can seal properly you don't get dust in it so from the back one I've got like a back one where I've got the compressor press and my tools and stuff in here I've one one that isn't here and then that's inside at the moment and these two are for a hot gear like a jerseys and stuff where when we camp this this one here is a pot and pans and, and stuff and this this is like the, the washing up stuff. What is also nice about this is when you release it, it stops halfway way long. So, so this over here is used as a cooking spot where you can pull these these together. You can make your sandwiches on here. You can cook your veggies, and it's just. I mean, although we have got tables. This is also used as a table for cooking and making a cup of tea. I mean, our tea we, we for our tea and kettle we use this this back section of, of bumper as well. And similarly, on the other side we have a couple of boxes. One got a coffee in, and and the other other one will have tin food. And then there's one that's also that comes at the back that has our vegetables and stuff. And so it's pretty. Pretty low, a lot of room to pack things over here, and then this one as well. Yeah, it's pretty easy. Just slide them in, give them a clip. You can close the door, and you can see in the front of the door this this over here is to so you can close it properly, and you don't have these doors rattling back and forward when you when you're running. So I was also saying earlier on the sides of these I've allowed a lot of inlets to go into the side of the void. I mean for instance this one right at the back is I put all my spares in there, like my fan belts and the bearings and 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 what whatever. And on this this side as well there's got all these spaces and I stick the funnels in and and I mean on this one here you can put like the extensions, the, the jumper cables and, and everything. So there is a heap of, of other packing space that's available. These two things here, it's a 20 more square pipe again. One here and one in the front is to put my surfboards on. So you can see this is where I put the surfboards up on these racks at the top. I tie it through here with some of these stretchy stretchy cords. I just wrap it, wrap it through the tail leash over the fin and just tie it this side through the tail leash over the fins with, with these stretchy cords and the board isn't tight. I similarly put one on the front there and they haven't or well they're not gonna come out hopefully and brain any of us. These drawers are for our day-to-day -day clothes. Like there are three drawers together that I strap. I also got a strap around them, and this we used a lot in Africa. If we had to go into 
a hotel if there's no camping so you can just pick the three lots of drawers up and there you've got your clothes and your toothbrush and everything like the bottom drawer you'll put trousers in there second drawer put all different types of shirts the top drawer you put um, underpants and socks and your toothbrush and, and and maybe a torch and stuff like that so this this extra room room is very very handy so a day-to-day -day clothes box, or just clothes box or drawers, are just strapped to the side with these grunt straps when you want to open it. You loosen it a little bit, you twist the drawers and you can get in and out of your drawers pretty, pretty easy. You finish, finish with it, you just pull the drawer and it's stuck there. It's, it doesn't it doesn't make noise when you go through the gravel roads and that because you've got some some soft stuff behind it so that's a drawer here there's a drawer here so simply long pants here shirts here underpants and socks here toiletries emergency bag and all little little bits and bobs probably for half the year you aren't allowed to make fires at, at sites like when we went through Africa about every night we, we made a fire but here you can't so I bought a little cooker which makes it pretty easy to fire up and make a, some steak and even some vegetables on here as well so the cooker is stored behind the, the drawers in between the fridge and it's pretty easy to put it through this side window and a gull wind, wind window so it's pretty easy to get it in in and out um, the rest of the stuff that I won't show now is down at the bottom next to the the inverter is I've got a box that holds three kites and all my kiting equipment next to it another box that we close that we keep our shoes and boots in and Ugg boots if we're going on to, onto a cold station and another little bucket for my wetsuit so, so that sort of takes the area from the water cans down to the seat and as you see if if it is raining or something's too stormy to go above to undo these take these out and take these couple of things out and put them put them outside here or we put the put the drawers at the front seat and everything else out and everything outside is a five minute job and then you're sleeping in the car and lastly, the last lot of stuff that go in is our tables and chairs. The two tables have got a 1,500 piece jigsaw on it at the moment, which is why they aren't in here. But here's chairs, we like comfortable chairs that you can sit in and sleep in. As I say, we're on holiday, not, not in boots to camp, and here's the, the ladder. So this is basically ready to roll. Hasn't got a lot of luggage, it's easy to get there, we don't have to climb over anything to get anything else here which is what makes you tired tired and on camping and yeah as I say we had a similar situation like this when we traveled through Africa and it works worked pretty well one of the things that had me pondering for a long time was the roof racks whether I get a long tray to go all the way to the front or what I do trays that were available had rails on them so the this tent which is pretty wide couldn't fit fit into them the flat ones only ended at the door over here and I mean if you look at the flat tray they basically are roof racks with a flat tray tied on top of it so I thought that if I use rhino racks and the bottom of the tent is sturdy like a tray and just tight onto that it'll do so I could have used three rhino racks but I used four and then the thing that really had me wondering is what I'm going to where I'm going to put the gas bottles and how I'm going to tie them down so I bought a little front rack from King's a really cheap I think $150 so I had to modify it I had to cut off pieces of pipe and it just fit in pretty nicely so what I do is I've got a little hole made a piece of wood I tied down, got a hole, stick stick the gas into the hole and I modified one of these grip, grip things that 
one side clips on, onto the roof rack. I'll show you on this side. One side clips onto the roof rack here, clips onto the roof rack on the other side. Just just wind wind the handle up, and it's really sturdy sturdy in here. This thing isn't going to go anywhere. So that's all solve that and also having this rack here is quite nice when you're in the tent you can put your, your tea on there the let me tell you about a rooftop tent it's a bundu top which is an automatic tent that just closed tent that just opens and closes with a push of the button so it's seated on here on the top of the tent is a solar panel, a 300 watt solar panel and apparently the, the top can carry 25 kilograms of weight so if you wanted to put a roof rack with surfboards on here you could do that that as well. It's pretty large, we got a, a larger than normal size, a king size which is 2.2 meters long and 1.6 meters wide. I like the wide one because I'm pretty tall and battle to get into the smaller side. The ladder is also pretty easy to put on. It's got a, a hook that hooks into this channel on the top here. So you just hook it in and you're ready to climb. Now to, to open it up, it's got four clips. You've got to undo around the tent. Also, doesn't take long. Number three and number four. That's all I'm done. Down at the action center, there's this outlet comes from the solar panels. And that one goes to the main battery which lifts the tents. The, these are two emergency um, connections. If something happens to the switch, you can just short circuit a jumper lead on here. And you can short circuit a jumper lead on there and it'll start. Now to lift it up, you just push it on the, And up she goes. Must be about 30 seconds and the rooftop tent is up and ready to climb in, into. One thing good about it is you can leave your blankets inside there, it's got a mattress that stays in, your blankets and pillows can stay in there so it really really changes the whole outlook to camp. It's pretty easy to get into and When you're up here, you've got a nice view, one out the front. You can put your coffees on in the morning when you get it, and there's another side view. And all of them have got mesh screen on to keep the insects out if you need, need it. Um, on these, there's also the two fans in here, one on this side. And then one on the other side, and in here as well, there is a light that you can turn on and turn off if you need light at night. So pretty, pretty nifty. It's also got two bags, bags that you can put stuff in if you're sleeping. You can put your stuff in if you're sleeping at, at night. Yeah. So all, all in all. We've spent a few nights in here, it's comfortable and um, we haven't tried it out in massively windy conditions yet, but that'll happen. So to take it down is just as easy. Push the knob. Close the hooks.
and you're ready to go. We've also got an awning out of the side of the car which we use to sit under in the sun obviously and when it rains as well. This is a 2.5 by 2.5 awning and we found on our Africa trip uh, most of the times when you, it's raining hard you can sit under here and be protected from the elements. The only problem comes is when it's, it's windy. We've also got a, a mesh, a fly mesh that clips onto this pr pretty speedily and that's, that we find like places central WA when the fly seasons come here and the millions of them that it helps a, a lot to get a sealed place to sit in. So that's it folks. And in case you're wondering what this rope here is, it's a trusty old washing line for that gets put up is the first thing up at every camp. Some other things we've put in is a something from Kings that cost ten dollars that is comes onto the back of the seat that you can put your map books in, your binox in here and and um, put one or two stuff away. I've also made a very basic thing in the meantime just comes backwards and forwards where you can keep water and a couple of things as there's no storage space in the car. I still need to invent something else but that's another day's story.